back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me on this video today. It's a very special video. Watching this the day that I posted, it is my birthday. I am 37 years old and I am feeling a little bit old, but excited for being 37 and what's to come. Now, I would say my most asked question is what my skincare routine is. I would like to say that I've never had any Botox or filler or anything like that. Not to say that there's anything wrong with getting that done. In fact, I do feel like it's almost time for me to invest in some Botox. I do definitely have some frown lines after having kids. I've maintained a really good skincare routine since I was about 16 or 17 years old and wanted to share a few tips with you. Now, I am not a professional and I'm not saying that any of the products I use or routine that I have is going to work for you. But this is what has worked for me and I will share some tips along the way what has made the biggest difference in my skin. Something else I wanna mention is if your skin is great, it's feeling great and you have a good routine, there's no need to change anything that you're doing. And I find this is the hardest part with social media. There's new trends that come on every year, new products that come about every year. And it's so hard to not fall into those traps. If there is reputable information about a new product, a new serum that maybe I want to introduce into my skincare routine, I definitely will but if your skin is great it's feeling great then I wouldn't change anything that you're doing all right so let's get into it like I said I've had a really good skincare routine since I was a teenager I did have pretty bad hormonal acne when I hit puberty and back then there was no social media so I was buying whatever I could at the drugstore you know those oxy pads that you aggressively scrub all over your face to try to get rid of the acne I grabbed a drugstore moisturizer and that's what I used for many years and this moisturizer just happened to have SPF in it. Now this was like two year 2001, 2002 that I started this. So back then people were talking about using SPF for anti-aging. This is back when people were still putting oil all over their body and getting in the sun. I for some reason lucked out and chose a moisturizer that had SPF in it. I think it was only SPF 15. I used that every day for years and I'm realizing now that it probably helped with my skin combating UV rays. It's probably one of the number one tips that I'll pass on to my kids when they start their skincare routines and going in the sun, applying SPF to their face every day so they can maintain a young and youthful glow. So like I said, I definitely do see Botox in my future. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with it if you have it now or if you were getting it in your 20s. I've just waited a period of time and I think it's really within the last year that I've seen a change in my skin. Now, I don't wear a ton of makeup. I'm wearing a bit today because I had some meetings. I usually don't wear a lot of foundation. I'm wearing a little bit of under eye concealer, mascara, blush, and I do have my eyebrows groomed as well. But regardless of how much makeup you wear, I think it's really important to be double cleansing. They say the first cleanse is really to dissolve any debris, makeup, anything like that. And then with the second cleanse, you're going in with a gentle cleanser. You don't want to be removing the natural oils in your skin. So you want to be using gentle cleansers, but that's how you're really starting to get into those pores to clear them up. Any type of gentle cleanser you want to use at night to double cleanse is totally fine. The first step in my cleansing routine, I just use a makeup melting balm. Um, and I know there's a lot of them on the market, but I just use this one from e.l.f and it's fairly inexpensive and I just get it at the local shopper's drug mart. I just put a little bit in my hands, rub out any clumps, and you're literally just rubbing it all over your face and it's just gonna dissolve that makeup. Again, I'm not wearing foundation, but it's just gonna dissolve any SPF or impurities in my skin. And you really wanna be rubbing this in really good before we emulsify it with some water. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of water and work it in gently, emulsify it, and then rinse until it's all gone. Now, I haven't got on the trend yet of using filtered water or using you know, special towels or anything like that. I still just use regular tap water I still just use my regular bath towel to dry my face, but maybe one day. Like I said, this is what works for me, and maybe if my skin wasn't doing well, I would try to solve the problem another way. Right, let me get this emulsified and rinsed off. I emulsified that with water, rinsed it off, dried my face, and my face is already feeling pretty clean. So now I'm gonna go in with a gentle cleanser to do my second cleanse. And the one I use is the La Roche-Posay um, Cleansing Micellar Foaming Water. It's very gentle. I feel like I do get a thorough cleanse of my face without it stripping away those natural oils. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to my face, put some water, 
get this all foamed up and cleaned and rinsed and we're ready to go. Now I would say just within the last two years I started using a retinol. I never used a retinol in my 20s. It was just when I started seeing the fine lines that I started to incorporate a retinoid into my routine. The one that I chose was just totally random. I went to the shopper's Mart and just bought the La Roche-Posay Retinol Serum B3. I'm not an expert on the potency of this serum but i have read online that it is one of the more potent retinols that you can use so you definitely want to ease into using a retinol this isn't something you're just going to want to start using every day i started using this about once a week for almost six months and then gradually started increasing the frequency of it and now i do use it every night so after a gentle cleanser you do not want to be mixing this with any acidic cleanser so make sure your cleanser doesn't have any salicylic acid in or anything like that going in with a gentle cleanser and then i always always sandwich the retinol so by, what i mean by that is i'm not going to go in directly onto my slightly damp clear skin with the retinol i'm actually going to put a little bit of a barrier onto my skin first and in, that's in the form of a moisturizer. Now the moisturizer I use, I'll actually just put it here. It's the uh, Coco Kind moisturizer, but I did put it in this little container. I feel like it's just a little bit more sanitary. So I squeeze a little bit at the top and I'm just gonna put a little bit to create a barrier for that retinol. All right, now once I've got a little bit of a barrier, I'm going to go in with the retinol and you just wanna go in with a little amount here. So I'm just gonna put a small drop on each cheek. I would say this is the most expensive part of my skincare routine, but a little goes a long way with it. And I've seen a huge difference in my fine lines and the texture of my skin since using retinol. Retinol is really great for stimulating collagen production, improves the texture of your skin, and obviously reduces the look of fine lines and wrinkles. But again, you slowly want to start with a low concentration and build your way up in frequency until your skin can tolerate it. You know, if you're seeing lots of breakouts, if you're seeing your skin getting dry and flaky, you need to take a step back from the retinols. Ease into it slowly. The sandwich method has worked great for me. So again, I put on a little bit of the moisturizer, the retinol goes on top, and then applying the rest of the moisturizer. I've seen some people use a different moisturizer on top something that's really thick if you watch some of my other videos you know that in the winter months I do use a facial oil so if it's particularly dry that day then I will definitely put a facial oil on top of this to really just seal everything in I definitely wouldn't want to do this in the summer in fact my video that I'm posting next week you'll see that I actually go for a facial because I felt after weeks of using the facial oil in the winter has clogged my pores a little bit However, I was prone to getting dry spots all over my face when I was in my early 20s and using a facial oil has just really helped with the dryness of my skin. One that I use is the Coco Kind Chia Face Facial Oil. Again, I bought it on a whim. Just got used to using it. I put a couple drops on, massage that in. Feels really good, nice and moisturized. And then we're going to bed with this nice glow. I do like to put a lip mask on. Again, this is just an e.l.f. Fully hydration lip mask. It's nothing that's too expensive, but I find it works just as good, if not better, than the Laneige lip mask that I've been using. And I think this is like a third of the cost, if not a quarter of the cost. Taking good care of your skin doesn't have to be expensive. The products I'm using, you know, Coco Kine, La Roche Posay, and Elf, I buy them all at Shoppers Drug Mart. So this is how I would go to bed. And I also do sleep with the humidifier in my room for the winter months. Again, I live in a very dry climate. I live in Calgary in Canada, and it's very dry here in the winter. So sleeping with the humidifier in my room helps me wake up feeling a little bit more hydrated. Now I hate when people say this, but skincare is also well, what you put in your body. So staying hydrated, drinking lots of water, making sure you get a lot of vitamins, minerals, omega-3s, that type of thing. That's really gonna help improve your skin. When I'm dehydrated, maybe from um, waking up from a night of drinking, or if I don't drink enough water the night before, then I can really tell the difference in my skin. I just look really dehydrated, I look really pale. It's incredible how much water can make a difference. Getting lots of sleep is obviously really important too. Um, I would say that I'm finally now getting a lot of sleep, that my kids are older, obviously as a new mom, wasn't getting as much sleep. But again, skincare routine as a new mom when I have a newborn wasn't really my priority, and that's just something I'm getting into now, and that's what these videos are all about. 
I think something else to note is that consistency is key. So don't just buy products, try it once or twice. You really have to give a product a solid go before you can determine whether or not it suits your skin. Now, for me, I can instantly tell when a moisturizer isn't gonna work for me because you get that tight feeling on your face, which I just hate. And that's how I know a moisturizer isn't working for my skin. But things like retinols, vitamin C, different types of serums, facial oils, you're really not gonna see a difference just from a few uses. You have to really give it at least six weeks before you see some improvement in your skin texture. So consistency is key. Don't expect to see immediate results. If you're a teenager and you're just getting started and you have no idea what to purchase, I would definitely recommend getting a good cleanser for the evening, washing your face every night, and um, a good moisturizer. And then in the morning, always, always, always putting on a good sun protectant, um, an SPF. Anyways, I'm feeling really good for where my skin is at now. I'm not gonna pretend like I don't get hormonal breakouts here and there. My body is still trying to level out after having kids and breastfeeding for so long. But I find with a really good routine, especially with the introduction of retinol over these last couple of years. If I do get a little bit of a breakout, it's gone within about 24 hours if I don't touch my face. As tempting as it is to pick your face, let it be, and it's incredible how quickly your skin can just resolve itself. I really appreciate you watching my video. This has been such a fun video to make. If you have any questions, comments, please drop them down below. Again, I'm not a professional, but I can still give you tips from my experience as a 37 year old mom who hasn't had any Botox or filler or anything like that. Also, if you have any tips for a late 30s woman maybe wanting to get Botox for the first time, let me know because I'm all for the tips. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Be sure to like and subscribe and bye for now. Should we, should we